Nash and I'm here at COP26 with Mayor Hidalgo, Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome. Thank you. It's wonderful to be with you. There's a lot going on in Phoenix related to climate change. You are proving to be somebody who's very concerned about resilience, also bringing the ideas of building back better together with addressing the climate emergency. Tell me a little bit about your plan and what you're doing. One of the things we're doing in Phoenix that has gotten wide reception, that's been very positive, has been our Office of Heat Response and Mitigation. Mm -hmm. We are a desert city. Heat is a real issue for us, and it brings people together across political lines. We have now a chief heat officer that's looking at ways we can cool the city. One example is we have the largest cool pavement program in our country. Mm -hmm. It is a reflective coating on our streets that we found has about 10 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit in cooling, 5 to 6 degrees Celsius. So you can feel the difference. The city street is more comfortable, hmm. and that has wide appeal. The office is also doing more traditional solutions, such as tree planting. And then we're looking at the most advanced building materials as well. How can we innovate to have a more comfortable city? How do you address the issue of equity as you look to implement these solutions? So we are really trying to be intentional. We have uh, planted the trees in every part of our city, but with an eye to equity. One of our first areas where we tested the cool pavement was our public housing, which also tends to be one of the communities that has the highest rate of people who don't have automobiles and who walk around. And um, it's gotten great response. Years ago, we sat down with our public housing residents and we asked them, what, what do you want to see as the city invests in your community? Cooler, more comfortable, more walkable areas was high on their list. Mm -hmm. uh, they also wanted solar in their community, and so we put solar over uh, a lot of the public spaces, and then it reduces their bills $15 a month, which has also gotten very high reviews. Incredible. Tell me how the, the cool pavements work. What is the technology? So it's a reflective coating, and so instead of the dark asphalt absorbing heat, it um, reflects it away. Mm -hmm. So when I speak to elementary school students, they tell me, you know, you don't wear a dark black shirt if you want to be cooler. And this is the same principles mm -hmm. right here. We're also early in the testing, but we're finding that because the streets doesn't maintain as much heat, they last longer. Mm -hmm. So the heat and the contraction and expansion was really causing potholes. And every mayor loves fewer oh, wow. potholes. <laughs> you mentioned a really interesting thing a moment ago about how it brings people together across the political divide. I imagine that that must be such a relief as a mayor when you can bring something out of the political arena into more of a solutions. Uh, anything else that you've done that seems to have brought people together? There's wide enthusiasm about electric vehicles in our community across, mm -hmm. public, uh, across political lines. So the Phoenix area is now often called the Electric Valley because we have a large concentration of companies that are making electric vehicles. Those are great jobs. Uh, the companies that are investing in that tend to have strong benefits and a really bright future for the people working in our community. And we've found really stakeholders that don't usually work together mm -hmm. who've been willing to sit down and say, how do we train the people to work in the industry? We have vacancies and we're trying to make sure, particularly with our community colleges, that they are talking about how well these jobs pay and trying to get young people mm -hmm. to get the training so that whether we're manufacturing vehicles or installing, installing charging stations, we have the workforce. How much of the growth is, is linked to this idea of green jobs or scaling up within the green economy? What we been finding uh, through C40 mayors is that if we look at emissions reductions, green jobs could really maybe get us half of the way to the 2030 goal for the United States. We just released a, a very useful study for mayors that talks about whether it be energy efficiency, retrofits at buildings, or better technology, that that can help us achieve the goal of getting everyone fully employed at the same time we are reducing our emissions. And that's something that's captivated a lot of people and given us more momentum than we would have otherwise. You're in a part of the world where migration is a day-to-day -day issue. You're, of course, not alone. We heard from the mayor of Dock and North, uh, also a city where migration happens. How does, is that a challenge? And how can you turn that also into an opportunity? 
right now, we have so many areas where we're hiring and we need people who are willing to work. Our light rail investments have been a great source of employment for people who are new to our community. In Phoenix, our largest source of new residents from the international community comes from Mexico, but we are also one of the largest cities for resettling refugees. I was talking to one man who had come to us from East Africa and who was now building our light rail system. And he shared with me that the job he got on the light rail system paid significantly more than the job he had previously, which was working at a hotel. He and his wife had decided they had the financial stability to start their family. And so he showed me the picture of their beautiful baby and just the future because of that green job. I get chills actually listening to you. Thank you so much for stopping by to speak to us here at the Culture Mining Mayor of Phoenix. Thank you so much.